Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson of Paper 2. As you recall, we were doing Paper 2 yesterday, and we will continue doing Paper 2 revision until the 9th, no, the 14th of November, because you guys write IB Paper 2 on the 14th, uh, 15th of November. Okay, so yesterday, for some reason, I had a little bit of a Nervous breakdown when it asked to find the area of triangle BCE over triangle FEA. I don't know why. I'm sorry about that. But let's work this out, okay? We actually had all the information we needed. Um, sorry, I need to cough. I'm really sorry. The stupid cough is just not going away. Sorry, guys. Okay. Let me show you what we know already. Do you agree that area of triangle ABE over triangle BCE, or in triangle BCE over triangle ABE? We can get those two areas, okay? We can rate, relate those two. So we can say the area of triangle BCE, because that's what we want at the top, over the area of triangle ABE. Um, remember that the area is a half base times height over a half base times height. But since both have got halves, we can cancel that. Now, do you see that they have, because they've actually got a common base, it's just been split up into two triangles, okay? Do you agree that they have the same perpendicular height? So therefore, their heights are going to be the same. And then we just need to look at their bases. So this is going to be three over two. That is three over two. Nice and easy, hey? Now, let's look at, oh, okay, that was a bit silly. Okay, so let's write it out again. Area of triangle BCE over the area of triangle, what was it? BAE, BAE was three over two. Okay, now we're gonna look at these two triangles. We're going to look at this big triangle here, BAE again, and we're going to compare it to this little triangle here, the little one. Um, this little triangle here, okay, because that's what we want. We want FAE, right? FEA. So therefore, we're going to say the area of triangle ABE, right? ABE, which is the same as BAE, over the area of triangle F A F E or F E A as they want it is equal to what? So again, it's a half base one height one over half base two height two, right? So halves cancel. Now, do you see this is all part of the big triangle? Okay. So therefore, they've got the same height. They've got the same perpendicular height. So we're just looking at a ratio of their bases. So the base of ABE is 2 plus 3 plus 5, which is 10, over the base of little AFE, which is just 2. Okay, but now, can you see something cool? We can actually relate these two. We can say the area of triangle BCE over the area of triangle BAE multiplied by the area of triangle BAE, that's this one here, over the area of triangle FEA. Right. So do you agree BCE is over BAE is 3 over 2? So that's 3 over 2 multiplied by the area of BAE over FEA. So that's 10 over 2. And then what do we get? Okay, do you agree that we can cancel this 2 and get a 5? So it's 3 times 5 is 15 over 2. So therefore the ratio of the area of BCE over the area of triangle FEA is just 15 over 2. And I'm sorry that I kind of messed up yesterday and I couldn't think how to do it. I just wasn't quite with it. I had a, yeah, not enough sleep. Okay, right. So let's move on to the next question, shall we? 
so there you go. Now at least you've seen how to do it. Now it says in the diagram below, in the diagram below, the equation of the circle center M is X minus H plus Y plus 4 equals 45. Okay, so this point here is 8 minus 4. Do you agree? And the radius is square root 45. Okay, the radius. So this length here, in other words, is going to be square root 45. Okay, now let's have a look at what else we can work out. Um, we can also see that it says PT is a tangent to the circle, so we now know that that's 90 degrees because a tangent is always perpendicular to radius. And what does it tell us about this angle here? Do you agree that since this is parallel to the side here, which they tell us PT is parallel to OM, but it's also drawn in, these angles are alternate, so this is also 90 degrees. Hmm, okay. So there's another circle having a center O, center of the origin, touches the circle at N. Okay, first it says write down the coordinates of M. Isn't it nice that just by reading through we've already answered the first question? How cool is that? So therefore, do you agree that that there is going to be 8, negative 4? Okay, next they say calculate the length of OM. OM. Okay, leave your answer in simpler third form. So you're going to use the length formula. So it says OM is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus 1, 1 squared. So I'm going to call this point 2. And I'm going to call this point 1. Why? Because that's 0, 0. So it's going to make it so much easier if we just have to subtract 0 every time. So that is this going to be the square root of x2 is going to be 8 squared plus y2 is minus 4 squared. So you've got the square root of 8 squared is 64 plus 4 squared is 16. So we've got the square root of 6 and 4 is 10, carry 1, that's 80, square root 80. So it says leave your answer in the simplest third form. So we're not finished. So you guys are welcome to use your calculators. Otherwise, another way to do it, and I just want to show you how to do it, is you can take your 80 and you can break it down into your prime factors, right? So we can divide this by 2 and you get 40. And you divide that by 2 and you get 20. And you divide that by 2 and you get 10. And you divide that by 2 and you get 5. And you divide that by 5 and you get 1. <clears throat> so do you agree that that's the same as saying 2 squared? That's the same as saying 2 squared. Right, that's 2 squared. This is 2 squared times by 5. I know you can do this on a calculator, but a lot of times in these questions, they actually say do it without your calculator. So I like to show you guys how to do this, okay? So do you agree that that is going to be, you take the 2 out, that's 2, you take that 2 out, that's 2, and then you got root 5. So the answer is 4 root 5. So therefore, the length of OM, the length of OM is 4 root 5. Okay, happy with that? Right, now they want us to calculate the length of ON, leaving your answer in the simplest third form. Okay, so if you look at our equation of the circle, hang on a second, you can see it says x minus 8 squared plus y plus 4 squared is equal to 45. And we've already pointed out that the radius, the radius, is equal to square root 45, right? Which could be written as 9 times by 5, which is 3 root 5. Do you agree? So I could write this as 3 root 5. OM, OM is 4 root 5, and they want the length of ON. But do you agree that ON is just going to be OM minus NM, the radius? which is going to be 4 root 5 minus 3 root 5, which is just going to be root 5. 
Okay, and again, it says leave your answer in simple form. We've done that, root five. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna write here, what was this? This was four root five. Okay, now it says calculate the size of angle O M T. We've done it, haha, -ha, 90 degrees. Why? Because this is my reason. Okay, let's write this down so that you guys know. We would say M T P equals 90 degrees. Why? Because a radius and tangent always make 90 degrees, always perpendicular. Then you could say N or O M T is equal to 90 degrees and why alternate angles there you go so now we've got that that is 90 degrees right now it says determine the equation of mt so they want the equation of mt in the form y is equal to mx plus c so they want the equation of mt um, okay, so do you agree we can get this gradient? We can get the gradient of OM. Okay, why am I thinking like this? Because I need, look at this, so the equation is Y is equal to MX plus C. I need to get the gradient of this line MT, but I don't have another point. I don't have this T, so I can't get the gradient of that line. Okay, but I could get the gradient of OM. And then because these two lines are perpendicular, I can use the fact that perpendicular lines have got a special relationship when it comes to the gradients, and I can get the gradient of MT. Okay, so let's do that. So let's get the gradient of OM. So M of OM is gonna be Y2, which is minus four minus zero, over X2, which is eight minus zero, which equals negative four over eight, which equals negative a half. Excellent. But we know that perpendicular lines, M1 multiplied by M2 equals negative one. Okay. So M1 is going to be this gradient of minus a half. So you've got minus a half times by m2 is equal to negative one. Therefore, we can take that across. And when you divide by a fraction, what do you do? You tip and times, you tip and times. So therefore, we're gonna say that m2 is equal to minus one times by negative two over one. I'm tipping and times and these cancel and therefore my gradient is two. Okay, so now I've got that is two. Okay, now I'm gonna erase some stuff, not all of it. I'm gonna erase some stuff. So I've got space to write. And then what I wanna do, okay, I'm just erasing most of it. In fact, all of it, let's just go. Because I've still got another question after that. Right. Now, now we say we've got the two. Now we need to find C. So we can substitute in this point here, A minus four. So we can say negative four is equal to two times by A plus C. Do you agree? So therefore, we can say, well, negative four is equal to two times eight is 16 plus C. So when I take it across, what does it become? It becomes minus 20. So minus four is, oh, sorry, minus 16 is equal to C, therefore C is equal to negative 20. So therefore my equation is Y is equal to two X minus 20. Ta -da! That wasn't so bad, hey? Okay? Right, now let's look at the next, um, the next question. It says they want us to calculate the coordinates 
of t. They want us to calculate the coordinates of t. So let us have a look at that. Sorry, I'm just trying to work out why this thing's going red again. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, we have the equation. We have a length. We know that this, we have the length of this and we have the equation of that line. Um, hmm, I'm just trying to see if there's an easier way to do this. We know that that is 90 degrees. Okay. So do you agree that we have the equation of this line? Okay. It is y is equal to 2x minus 20. I just want to read what else it says. It says PT is a tangent circle. T and PT is parallel to O. I'm another circle O. So just, okay, fine. We have the point 8 minus 4. Okay. And we have the gradient. Okay. Um, we have the gradient is 2. And we've got the length. The length is, and we've got the length. The length of t is 3 root 5. Okay, so do you agree that we could get an equation for this? Okay, we could get, so let's call this x and y for that point. We don't know what it is, but we could do the length thing. We could say, well, 45 is equal to, let's call this x being x2. So this is going to be x minus 8 all squared plus y minus minus 4 all squared which is x minus 8 all squared plus y plus 4 all squared okay we knew that already right that is the equation for the circle so we didn't really need to write it out again that's just the equation of the circle and T falls on that circle, right? But we also have this. We know that y is equal to 2x minus 20. So we could substitute for y into this bit of the equation. And then we could solve for x. Do you agree? So we could go um, 45 is equal to, and we're going to get either that point or this point. We're going to get two points, either the top point or the bottom point is equal to, I mean, might as well multiply this out already, x squared minus 16x plus 64 plus, and then this becomes 2x minus 20 plus 4 all squared. Okay, so that becomes x squared minus 16x plus 64 plus, do you agree that that's the same as saying minus 16? So this becomes 4x squared. 2 times 16 is 32, and we double it to 64. So it becomes minus 64x, okay? And then 16 times 16, 6, 6 is 36, carry 3, 6, 3 is a 3, 6 is on 18 plus 3 is 210612. Oh, let me just check that I'm right about this. Um, 16 times 16. There we go. 256. I don't know what I was doing. 256. Okay, wait. Okay. And that becomes plus 256 because of the fact that it's plus 250. I'm sorry about it being a different rate. I'm not going back now. So let's add up all the like terms. So we've got x squared plus 4x squared is 5x squared, right? Minus 16x minus 64 is 80x minus 80x plus 256 plus 64 is 320. 
Now, do you agree that I can divide everything by five and we can get the equation with the coefficient of x squared being one? Equation with the coefficient of x squared being one. So let's do that. So we're going to go um, I just realized it's all still for equal to 45, wasn't it? So, <laughs> so therefore, uh, because it is equal to this length of the circle here, sorry. So therefore, we're going to go 320 minus 45 is 275. So this is 275. We can still divide everything by 5. So we get, because um, that's not 0. So we get 0 is equal to x squared minus... 80 divided by 5 is going to be 16x plus 275 divided by 5 is 55. Ooh, is 55. Okay. And that gives you factors of 5 and 11. So it becomes x minus 5, x minus 11. So therefore, x equals 5 or x equals 11. So obviously, this point here is 11. And I don't know what the y is yet. I have to substitute into the equation for the straight line. But my equation for the straight line was y is equal to 2x minus 20. Why is that 11? Because do you see that this point here is 8? So obviously one of these values is in front of the 8 and the other one's behind the 8 or on the, further along the x-axis. So this x value would be 5 something, I don't know what, and this is going to be 11 something. So we're going to have to find the y value for that. So therefore we've got y is equal to 2 times by 11 minus 20, which works out to be 2. So therefore, this is 11, 2. There you go. Nice question, that one. That was a nasty question. I really enjoyed that. Okay, right. Moving on. Okay, it says, ABC is a triangle with verti vertices A, 1, 3, B, minus 2, 0, and C is P minus 4, where P is greater than 0. Okay. And it says AC, the length of AC is root 50. Okay. First, this is determine the gradient of AB. Okay, so that's fairly easy. We can do that. M of AB is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is basically just the, um, what was I going to say? Um, that is obviously the formula that is on your form on your formula sheet which is your gradient it doesn't matter which point you call two and which point you call one as long as you realize that you need to keep them consistent so in other words if this is x1 you can't then be using this as y2 so let's call this point two and this point one just because we can so for that's three minus zero over 1 minus minus 2, which becomes 3 over 1 plus 2, which is 3, which is 1. So the gradient of AB is just 1. Then it says show by calculation that P equals 2. Okay. Well, we know the length of this is root 50. Do you agree? So we can say that 50 is equal to x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, which is equal to x2, we're going to call this again x2, it's going to be 3 minus p all squared plus y2, that was actually y, sorry guys, let me just fix that. one minus c plus let's try again three minus minus four all squared okay which equals one minus p all squared plus
plus, 3 plus 4 is 7 squared, and that is equal to 50, right? So therefore, we've got 50 is equal to 1 minus 2p plus p squared plus 7 squared is 49. So do you agree that that's 49 plus 1 is 50 and that's 50? So we got 0 is equal to um, minus 2p plus p squared. And then we can take out a common factor of p. So we get 0 is equal to p 1 minus um, 2p. Why am I getting p as a half? I'm not, I'm being an idiot. Um, this becomes P minus two. P minus two, therefore P equals zero, or P equals two. Ta-da! So there you go, P equals two. So that's very easy. So that was done. Now it says, determine the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. They want the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB. So the first thing you need to realize when we're doing perpendicular bisectors is that we need to find the midpoint, okay? The midpoint of AB is obviously going to be bisecting AB. So that's the first thing. So let's do that. Okay, so let's do that. Um, so the midpoint is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. Okay, so therefore it is minus 2 plus 1 over 2, and then 0 plus 3 over 2. Minus 2 plus 1 is going to be minus one, so it's just going to be minus a half all over three over two. Okay, well, one and a half. So that's that point over here. Okay, some point over there we're going to call this m is minus a half three over two. Okay, now it says the determined equation of the perpendicular bisector. So the next thing we need to do is get the gradient of AB, but luckily we've got it. It is one. Therefore, the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is going to be negative one, right? Because why? Because the gradient of AB multiplied by the gradient of the perpendicular bisector has to equal minus one. So this is one times by the M of the perpendicular bisector equals negative one. And obviously this is also gonna be minus one, right? So now we've got a point and we've got the gradient. So we can get the equation of the line. We can go y equals negative one x plus c. We've got this point, so we can substitute in. So we've got three over two is equal to negative one times by negative a half plus c. So we can multiply those two together and they become positive. So we've got three over two is equal to minus times minus is a plus. So it's one over two plus c. So C is going to be 3 over 2 minus a half, which is 2 over 2. So C is going to be 1. Okay, so C is 1. So therefore, you can say that the equation for this is going to be Y is equal to negative X plus 1. Ta-da! Right, now I need to erase all my writing again. So you can see with the coordinate geometry or, the, uh, or um, whatever you're going to call it, analytical geometry, that it basically, as long as you know which equations to use and the rules, then this is actually a very easy section. You just have to know those sections and those rules. But now it says, state the coordinates of D such that A, B, C, D form a rectangle. So it needs to obviously be over here. I mean, if you follow the rules, A, B, C, D, D has to be here. And it just says state, so you don't have to prove it or anything else. Now, first of all, we know that at that point there is 2, negative 4. Okay, so if you look over here, you can see we went from minus 2 to 1. So how many points have we gone across? You can see we've obviously gone across three points. 
okay, from minus 2 to 1 is 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5, okay. Then again, if you look from here, we've gone from 0 up by 3 to get across to there. So therefore, it's gone up by 3 points, which means this has to go up by 3, so it's negative 1. Now it says, determine the equation of the circle passing through A, B, and C. So they want the equation of a circle passing through points A, B, and C. Um, just a second, I'll be back in a minute. I'm so sorry, we seem to have <laughs> had a technical difficulty and we, with our server um, or modem or whatever you call it, but it, it seems to have been sorted out now. Right, so now we've done D. Now it says they want us to determine the equation of a circle passing through points A, B and C. Okay, so let's think about it. Um, it obviously doesn't have the center, center origin, um, <laughs> so circle is center origin. So the formula is going to be x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equal to r squared. Do you agree? But do you agree we've also got three points? We've got a, b, and c. Do you agree? Three points, a, b, and c, because I want it to pass in through all three points. So we could start with point a, and we could say x minus 1 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals r squared. Okay, that's equation 1. Then we've got equation 2, which is going to come from b, which says x plus 2 squared plus 0 is equal to r squared. Hmm, so that looks kind of nice. And then we've got equation 3, which is x minus 2 
squared plus y plus 4 squared is equal to r squared and they're all equal to r squared do you agree because of the fact that they've all got the same radius okay because they're all in the same circle so now what we could do is try and simultaneously equate some of these equations so what i'm going to do is sorry let's start with three call it three is i'm going to start with one and two i'm going to say x minus one squared plus y minus 3 squared is equal to x plus 2 squared. Okay, so let's work out what that gives us. Okay, so do you agree that would give us x squared? Sorry, I'm just checking something. Oh my hat, I'm an idiot. I'll tell you why I'm an idiot. There's a much easier way to do this. Much easier way. Um, I think. What is the gradient of BC? What is the gradient of BC? The gradient of BC, M of BC. Is, okay, let me tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that if this is 90 degrees, okay, if this is 90 degrees, then this is a triangle in a semicircle, and that's the diameter, okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? So then we'd have the radius that'd be half of the root 50, which would be the only reason that they would give us the length of AC. So I'm starting to think that AC might be the diameter of the circle. So let's find the gradient of BC. The gradient of BC is going to be the change of y over the change of x. So again, let's call this point 1 and that point 2. So it's going to be minus 4 minus 0 over 2 minus minus 2 which is going to be minus 4 over 4, which is negative 1. Yay! So we know that the gradient of this line of AB is 1. M of AB equals 1. We know that the gradient of BC equals negative 1. Okay. So that means that this angle here is 90 degrees, which means that this is a triangle in a semicircle. So in other words, this AC... I don't know where it goes. I really am not very good at drawing circles like this. Um, is AC the diameter? So AC is the diameter of the circle. So now that makes things a lot easier because if we find the midpoint of AC, we will have the center of the circle. And if we find, and we know that half the length of that is going to be the radius, so they, that makes it so much easier. So let's find the midpoint of AC is going to be 1 plus 2 divided by 2, and then 3 minus 4 divided by 2, which is going to be 1 plus 2 is 3 over 2, so it's just 3 over 2. And 3 minus 4 is negative 1 over 2. So that's the midpoint of this, which is 3 over 2 minus a half, somewhere around there. And now that is the center of the circle. So we can go x minus 3 over 2 squared plus y plus a half all squared is equal to, and they told us this AC is the diameter. So we're going to halve that to get the radius, and then we're going to square it to full, for full equation. So it's going to be root 50 over 2 all squared. So therefore, it's x minus 3 over 2 all squared plus y plus a half all squared is equal to 50 over 4 which is 25 over 2. There we go. And that is the equation for the circle passing through points A, B, C. So that was actually a very sneaky question. Do you agree? 
Right, we will continue with doing paper two questions on Monday. Have a great day, grade 12s. Have a great weekend, study hard.